a child of God, a believer, fast the right manner. What it means to fast and how to fast with the power of fasting. We look at Isaiah 58 that shares about what it means to fast. We will look through the whole chapter of Isaiah 58. Cry aloud, spare not, lift up thy voice like a trumpet, and show my people their transgression, and the house of Jacob their sins. Here, many times, we overlook our failures. We overlook our iniquities, sins and transgression. This is what hinders our prayer, our fasting in God's presence. We may seek God, we may appear in God's presence, be diligent to fast. But with all the failures, struggles that we may be experiencing, the unforgiveness that we may be walking in, bitterness, the lack of fruit of the Spirit, and even the depths of sin, which can be iniquity or transgression, certainly hinders the power of fasting. Fasting is not an earthly practice. It originates from God, which is divine. In order to see the power of fasting, we need to first examine ourselves, confess before God, repent and ensure that we walk in the righteousness of God. We walk in the truth of God and are willing to cleanse ourselves, sanctify ourselves every moment through the shed blood of Jesus Christ. Verse 2 of Isaiah 58 says that they seek me daily and delight to know my ways as a nation did righteousness and forsook not the ordinance of their God. They ask of me the ordinances of justice. They take delight in approaching to God. Wherefore have we fasted, say they, and thou seest not? Wherefore have we afflicted our soul, and thou takest no knowledge? Behold, in the day of your fast you find pleasure and exact all your labors. Over here, it shares that we people, we even question God of what answer we received from him when we have stayed in his presence, when we have uh, dwelt in fast. So, but God says that all of this doesn't really work well with him. When there is transgression, when our life doesn't relate or align with the word of God. So the fasting without puring ourselves and purging ourselves in God is meaningless. No matter how many days, how many hours, how long we may take up a fast, all of it is void in God's presence when we do not look at the very prerequisite of fasting which needs our surrender in God's presence. Many of us feel God answers when we afflict our souls. 
but an acceptable fast is that which humbles one in the presence of God. We need to humble ourselves in fasting or even before we come into a fast. Behold, you fast for strife and debate and to smite with the fist of wickedness. You shall not fast as you do this day to make your voice to be heard on high. So the kind of fast where we make known before people, we voice it out before people, is not the kind that God expects. So it says, even when it comes to prayer, do it in your closet, not to be a hypocrite before people or for the sake of people. Rather, we maintain our relationship. We maintain the power of prayer and fasting in isolation, not to cause debate, not to... Uh, show that we are on a fast, but to do it relating to God. So is it such a fast that I have chosen a day for a man to afflict his soul? Is it to bow down his head as a bulrush and to spread sackcloth and ashes under him? Wilt thou call this a fast and an acceptable day to the Lord? So this is how God questions us. Is all this the way he expects from us? It's not the external practice of fast. It's not how we externally portray ourselves in fast. But the depth of humility, bearing a humble heart so that we are made acceptable to God which is not through ourselves. As Titus verse three, chapter 3 verse 5 says, we are made acceptable purely through the work of Christ. It is not our work. It is not our practices. But it is Christ through whom we are saved and through whom we are made righteous. Also, as Isaiah fifty seven fifteen shares, that I, the Lord, will dwell in the high and holy place with him also who has a contrite and humble spirit. So God's presence is not only in the heavenlies, but it's so powerful to know so intimate to understand that he will also dwell with all who have a contrite and humble spirit. And when we do, the further verse shares, he revives the spirit of the humble. God Almighty revives the spirit of the humble. He also revives the heart of the contrite ones. That is a power when we humble ourselves in God's presence, when we examine ourselves, overcome every sin, iniquity or transgression before God. And that is when he works for us. He revives our spirit and our heart. Verses 6 and 7. Is not this the fast that I have chosen? The further verse and verse 7 shares the purpose of fasting. What do we practice? What do we do when we fast? What is the kind of fast that pleases God? What ha God has chosen for us to work through? So the first reason is to loosen the bonds of wickedness. 
So we as a people, God places his burden in our lives. So it's not just for ourselves that we fast. It's not for our personal gains that we fast. But it is to see all those who are around us that we can be instrumental to touch lives and bless them. So the very first purpose to fast is to loosen the bonds of wickedness. So we are called to enable people into freedom from bondage, from struggles, from fetters that have held them several years and stood as a hindrance to their purposes. Then it is to undo the bands of the yoke, which is again to break the bondages, to destroy, claim destruction of the burden over people. Then it is to let the oppressed go free. Yeah. We stand in the gap. We stand between the porch and the altar to see that people who are under oppression are set free in the name of Jesus Christ. And to break every yoke, to divide our bread with the hungry. The, the heart to serve, the heart to give is also the purpose of fast. To bring the homeless poor into the house, to cover the naked, not to hide ourselves from our own flesh, which means we are not to obstruct ourselves from helping or reaching out to our own families, to our own blood, our relatives. Because in doing all that is of justice is what pleases the Lord. So fasting is when we set ourselves free from sin, we come before God with a contrite heart and a broken spirit. Further verse 8 comes with a blessing when we fast God's way. Then shall thy light break forth as a morning. Our very lives will reflect God's glory, the truth that brings light in our lives. And thine health shall spring forth speedily. Oh, God would restore our health, our strength through him. And thy righteousness shall go before thee, which is God's righteousness that will keep us, preserve us. And this is a blessing that we have when we fast in the right manner, the holy way of God's instructions. The glory of the Lord shall be thy rare God, which surrounds us with this protection, with this righteousness, when we walk rightfully in a life of prayer. Verse 9. Then will the Lord answer. Thou shalt cry, and he shall say, Here I am. So we have God's response to our cry, to our very call, and he makes himself manifest. We can hear his voice. 
when we listen to him we will know god's presence is over our lives so if thou take away from the midst of thee the yoke the putting forth of the finger and speaking vanity if thou draw out thy soul to the hungry and satisfy the afflicted soul then shall thy light rise in obscurity and thy darkness be as the noonday and the lord shall guide thee continually and satisfy thy soul in drought and make fat thy bones thou shall be like a watered garden and like a spring of water whose waters fail not and they that shall be of thee shall build the old waste places thou shall raise up the foundations of many generations and thou shall be called the repairer of the breach the restorer of paths to dwell in such meaningful verses when we walk before god in his desires that he brings forth his purpose or reality in our life so god says when we take away the yoke from our midst or rather it's if most times we do not realize or understand the purpose of fast or there is a condition it's only when we understand and implement god's pattern of fasting in our lives that he will prepare us he will use us for his glory and with that also comes that we do not speak of wickedness yeah we do not uh, work in the way the world works like uh, emphasized in psalm chapter 1 yes that we need to dwell in god's presence we need to meditate day and night the very word of god which preserves us which brings forth a blessing over our life so when we meditate when we live by god's word we do not participate in the things of this world we do not accept or entertain wickedness mockers scorners we do not encourage or participate in vain talking yes so we will see the light of god shine in us when we live in the rightful manner and even the darkness will be turned as a new as a noon day mm-hmm. how beautiful that god talks about darkness being as noon day so even when there is forces of darkness waging against our lives it will have to be brought down the darkness will be made day in god's glory the lord shall guide thee continually and satisfy thy soul in drought oh, even when we experience dryness in our soul dryness in our mind yeah, when our soul is thirsty when it craves for god god is there to satisfy us not only our soul our spirit and even our body yeah our body is made healthy in god's presence we will receive the blessing of god which will bear fruit yeah will be like a watered garden so there will be fruitfulness in our life in all that we do when we walk in god's precepts we will spring forth and there will not be dryness there will not be lack nor dirt in our lives 
For God, who promises when we walk in his righteousness and are upright in his presence, that he will build the old waste places. All that has been shattered, all that has been broken, all the waste as our eyes may look at it and see. God will use those places in our lives to bring forth His glory. He will enable us to raise foundations. He will use us to build the old waste places, to restore lives, to reform lives, to reform situations. And we will see generations blessed along with us. And when we abide by his very word, he calls us the repairer, the restorer, the repairer of the breach. Oh, whatever could have been the physical separation, the destruction, in lives, in families, God will use you to be the repairer, the mender and the restorer in lives, in families. It's such a promising word that God will use us for his purposes when we abide by his will. Verse 13 and 14, the last part of this chapter. But a lot that we need to understand, implement consciously when we choose to meditate upon God's word. We cannot take the commandment of God lightly or overlook the law of God, but inculcate the practice of following God's word, which brings blessing into our lives. So these last two verses distinctly and emphatically express God's acceptance of his people when we keep the Sabbath holy. When we preserve God's holy day to walk honorably, to hold in honor the work of God in His presence. It says, If thou turn away thy foot from the Sabbath, from doing thy pleasure on my holy day, and call the Sabbath a delight, the holy of the Lord honorable, and shall honor him, not doing thine own ways, nor finding thine own pleasure, nor speaking thine own words, then shall thou delight thyself in the Lord, and I will cause thee to upright, to ride upon the high places of the earth, and feed thee with the heritage of Jacob thy father, for the mouth of the Lord had spoken it. So we receive two kinds of blessings emphasized in this chapter. So when we keep ourselves from our own desires, when we preserve this day honorable and holy, we claim the Sabbath day to be a great delight in God's presence. We abstain from doing our own pleasure. 
we abstain from speaking our own words we abstain from doing our own things that are a form of recreation or entertainment and preserve the holy day the sabbath all through the day in being in god's presence in serving god in delighting in his presence preserving the holy day of god that we are blessed not only in the spiritual and heavenlies but also on earth we are blessed on this earth so it is when we dedicate ourselves to keep the sabbath that god prepares and equips us we will walk worthy in his presence so we will ride upon the high places of the earth yeah god's promises of spiritual blessing of treading high places and receiving the heritage of jacob is worthy and we are made worthy for it high places specifically emphasizes the spiritual realm specifically relates to what the enemy what satan himself uses as an agenda against our life so god gives us the authority to overcome his plans and tread these high places that the enemy has prepared against our lives so we receive the assured victory and deliverance against the schemes of the enemy we are raised above the levels of principalities powers rulers of darkness of this world spiritual wickedness in these high places so we are in that place the secret place of protection and covering under god's shadow keeping the sabbath by denying our own body our own soul and delighting in the lord also bestows jacob's inheritance on us and our generations so what is jacob's inheritance when we look back to genesis 27 it shares about god's blessing through isaac on jacob god give dew of heaven fatness of the earth plenty of corn and wine people to serve nations bow down cursed be every one that cursed thee and blessed be he that blessed thee be fruitful multiply and be a multitude of people and give thee the blessing of abraham to thee and to thy seed that thou mayest inherit the land wherein thou art a stranger even genesis chapter 35 claims the blessings of these promises over jacob over his seed and generations which is a blessing for us as well such divine blessings 
when we fully desire to love the Lord and keep the Lord's day holy and holy for his presence and glory to manifest to manifest in us therefore this is a kind of fast god desires and delights of us and the preserving 